No one wants to hear that they are falling into the hands of Almighty God and that he is very angry. We think, why is Almighty God angry at us? We're all good people. As you know, judgment begins with the house of God and then continues throughout the rest of the world to the entire population of the world. Listen to what the Lord Jesus Christ said to his own people, to his own church. Jesus said, Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches the hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Almighty God is going to torment the Jezebels of this nation, the false prophets of this nation, the sexual immoral of this nation, and strike their followers dead. God is very angry at our homosexual priests and the child molesters. God is angry at the lesbian pastors and the people who listen to their teachings. God is angry at our lies, our fornications, our adulteries, our abortions. Almighty God is angry because we build great football stadiums and worship the entertainers as many children around the world are sick and starving to death. Almighty God is angry because even the church is living as if there is no God. We will all believe in God when his judgment hits our nation by surprise. This is also what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying to the church. I know your deeds, that you were neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Repent means to turn away from our sin. The lukewarm people of our church are totally rejected by Almighty God. Our only chance is to repent, turn away from our sin. Almighty God usually waits for the wicked to die before they see his anger. But some Sometimes he gets so angry that he destroys their lands first, kills the people, and then casts their souls into hell. The time has arrived when the whole world will know that he is angry. Many people whom do not believe in God now will believe in God when his judgment hits them. You know in your heart that this is true. You're an intelligent person. You can follow Russia and Israel in the news. Almighty God is going to shake us back to the dark ages with our earthquake, just as he said by his prophets. This is a message from Almighty God to the modern world through the Jewish prophet Ezekiel. I'm reading from the NIV Bible, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Prophesy against him and say, This is what the sovereign Lord says. I'm against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and bring you out with your whole army, your horses, your horsemen, fully armed, and a great horde with large and small shields, all of them banishing their swords. Persia, Cush, and Put will be with them, all with shields and helmets, also Gomer with all its troops, and Beth to Goma from the far north and all of its troops, the many nations with you. Get ready and be prepared, you and all the hordes gathered about you, and take command of them. After many days you will be called to arms. In the future years you will invade a land that has recovered from war, whose people were gathered from many nations to the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They had been brought out from the nations, and now all of them live in safety. You and all of your troops and the many nations with you will go up, advancing like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. On that day, thoughts will come into your mind, and you will devise an evil scheme. You will say, I will invade a land of unwalled villages. I will attack a peaceful and unsuspecting people, all of them living without walls and without gates and bars. I will plunder and loot and turn my hand against the resettled ruins and the people gathered from the nations, rich in livestock and goods, living in the center of the land. Sheba and Duran and the merchants of Tarshish and all of her villages will say to you, Have you come to plunder? Have you gathered your hordes to loot? 
to carry off silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, and to seize much plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. In that day, when my people Israel are living in safety, will you not take notice of it? You will come from your place in the far north, you and the many nations with you, all of them riding on horses, a great horde, a mighty army. You will advance against my people Israel like a cloud that covers a land. In the days to come, O Gog, I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know when I show myself holy through you before their eyes. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Are you not the one I spoke of in the former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel? At that time, they prophesied for years that I would bring you against them. This is what will happen in that day when Gog attacks the land of Israel. My hot anger will be aroused, declares the sovereign Lord. In my zeal and fiery wrath, I declare that at that time there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. The fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the beast of the field, every creature that moves along the ground, and all the people on the face of the earth will tremble at my presence. The mountains will be overturned, the cliffs will crumble, and every wall will fall to the ground. I will summon my sword against Gog on all the mountains, declares the sovereign Lord. Every man's sword will be against his brother. I will execute judgment upon him with plague and bloodshed. I will pour out torrents of rain, hailstones, and burning sulfur on him, and on his troops, and on the many nations with him. And so I will show my greatness and my holiness, and I will make myself known in the sight of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord. There are two major events that will affect you even if you're not living in one of the nations listed as the enemies of Almighty God. The first event will be that Almighty God will prove himself holy in the eyes of the entire world by fulfilling these 2,680-some-year-old prophecies and many other prophecies concerning the earthquake in Israel. This horrible earthquake will shake and bring fear to every creature on earth. There are many earthquakes all over the world, sometimes daily earthquakes. But no earthquake in written history has ever been so great that it could be felt and bring fear to every creature on the earth. The entire world would see God's anger against his enemies in the destruction of their armies and fire falling on the enemy nations. Almighty God makes the entire world aware that he is the holy God, that he sent Israel into exile, and that he restored and gives favor to Israel as he pleases. When God fights for Israel, Israel will recognize and give glory to God as a sovereign Lord. And then Almighty God will pour out his Holy Spirit on the people of Israel. Almighty God will bless, prosper, and protect Israel. And Israel will love and glorify God. Every religion on earth will know the truth that the sovereign Lord of Israel is the one true holy God. And the second important event that will affect you, even if you're not living in one of the nations listed as the enemies of Almighty God, is the effect on you of the world-shaking earthquake itself. The mountains will be overturned, the cliffs will crumble, and every wall will fall into the ground. Think about what will happen in those great cities of the world when the skyscrapers and the high towers are shaken apart and collapse. The great dams burst. The power grids are shaken apart. The giant fuel and chemical tanks collapse to suffocate or to burn people for miles around them. Cliffs and glaciers will fall into the sea and cause tidal waves around the world. Stadiums, churches, mosques, and religious shrines will crumble and fall to the ground. The infrastructure of every country of the world will collapse in the same hour. Many of the active volcanoes will erupt due to the same geological pressures which caused the earthquake. Every person left on earth will witness the anger of Almighty God against his enemies. And as the nations of the earth are trying to recover from the devastation, Israel will have a time of peace and favor of God to renovate and rebuild the entire country. The fuel and equipment captured from the dead armies will supply Israel for seven years. The purpose of this earthquake is written in Ezekiel 38 and 39. The timing of this earthquake is very soon, as made evidence in the following facts. 
Israel was restored to become a nation in one day, which was May the 14th, 1948. The birth pangs began, and Israel has been at war with its neighbors ever since that day. This was the fulfillment of the prophecy given to Isaiah roughly 2,725 years ago. Isaiah 66, 7. Before she goes into labor, she gives birth. Before the pangs come upon her, she delivers a son. Who has heard of such things? Who has ever seen things like this? Can a country be born in a day, or a nation be brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. Israel has been fighting day to day for its life since the day it became a nation on May the 14th, 1948. This fighting is part of the labor of birth. The 2,680-some-year-old prophecy in Ezekiel 38 tells us that God will force Turkey, Ethiopia, and Iran to attack Israel under the leadership of Russia and its satellite nation in the time after Israel has been restored as a nation. Most anyone whom is following these nations in the world news can see that they are planning a massive attack on Israel now. When you see Russia and its criminal gang of nations attack Israel, the world-shaken earthquake is soon to follow. For thousands of years, mankind has built temples, shrines, churches, and mosques all around the world, which Almighty God is rejecting all at the same time. During the first seven years after the earthquake, the survivors of the other nations of the world will fall into a dark age of constant internal wars, plagues and starvation, and still the tribulation period has not yet arrived. Those nations like the United States, which were trying to divide Israel into two nations, will themselves be divided into several nations. The scriptures are not clear as to exactly what happens to the U.S., Canada, and Mexico during these troubled times. The nations of the old Roman Empire will regroup into ten nations, and as they rebuild, the stage will be set for the rise of the Antichrist. I've only discussed a small portion of the prophecies concerning the near end time events. I would like to quote what Jesus said in Luke chapter 21, 32. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Let's move on to what Jesus said about our time in Luke 21, 34 through 36. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen. And that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Friends, my heart is heavy in the knowledge that the entire world is falling into the hands of an angry God. And I am grieved that the entire planet has become a Sodom and Gomorrah that has provoked God's anger. The earthquake will kill many people and destroy the easy way of life that we know. Both the wicked and the righteous will die together. As Jesus said, for it will come on all those who live on the face of the earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Friend, unless you and I agree in prayer now, just follow me as I pray for us to be able to escape all that is about to happen and that we may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Yes, friend, just follow me in prayer. Father God, we agree together and ask that you forgive our sin, iniquity, and trespasses. Cleanse our minds and spirits with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and help us in our turning away from sin. Deliver us from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and keep us strong and holy. Please, mighty God, spare us from your anger and extend your mercy to us. Help us to escape all that is about to happen to those on the face of the earth, and that we will be able to stand before the Son of Man. We agree in touching for each other and receive this as done in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.